Well, we're talking to Rusty, a two and a half year old uh, Doberman Pinscher. He's a rescue and he's our first brown Doberman. And it's actually uh, all natural, natural ears, natural tail. Yeah. So, and it's he's a teenager, so we love him, but that's Rusty. <laughs> I, I love it. And I noticed you guys have, this is your third Doberman, correct? Yeah. It's my fourth. Yeah. Okay. When I was a kid, we had a Doberman. And the whole thing started. Julie, there's a lizard right there. And the, don't let Oh, the there's a lizard. Russ is going to see the lizard for this. Go crazy. <laughs> uh, a lizard came in the house and it's sunbathing by the piano. It's okay. Because we have the doors open. Yeah. And if he sees it, he's going to go crazy. So that'll be very entertaining. A little massacre. <laughs> um, uh, so. The, the whole thing started when I uh, was moving. Um, uh, my, my neighbor on my old street had a Doberman. And this is about how many years ago? Ten? Seven, eight. Seven or eight yeah. years ago. And he unfortunately passed away. But the dog, who was an old older dog, a large Doberman, he went to the pound. And I was on the mailing list for the neighborhood. And they said, if someone could come get Zeus, that would be great because they don't know how long they'll keep him there. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I, I remembered the dog and we're already here in the new house remodeling. I still had the old house. I was going back and forth. I said, you know what? I'm going to go down there and get the dog. And she had a look of shock because I always said, you know, oh, we travel too much. We can't really have a dog because we're not here enough. Yeah. And so we got Zeus. And he was he was an old Doberman, you know. He was pretty beat up. He was a um, German Doberman, like so. They're a little taller. They're actually bigger than the American uh, Dobermans. Okay. European Doberman, yeah. So, but he stayed with us for less than a year, and then he passed away. Then we got Cheech. Then yeah. now we had Rusty, but Richie had one when you were you Yeah, boy. we had one in in the eighties when the Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia area, mm -hmm. and uh, so when the Phillies won the World Series. Uh, if I have this right, I think Tug McGraw was the pitcher, right? And I don't we, we know. Named, we named I can't our remember dog, that far back. <laughs> we named our dog after Tug. Mm. The dog's name was Tug. And That's he was awesome. A, and he was, he was a sweet dog, you know, mm. a hunter. He liked to hunt. All of them. And they all seemed to really like to hunt. <laughs> I, did, I did see a video of one of the dogs. I think this might be Cheech with a Cheech. squirrel in his mouth. No, that was Zeus. That was, was Zeus, okay. Squirrel in his mouth. <laughs> Zeus he had picked the a dead squirrel, a dead one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he was on a walk and just picked it up because we weren't, well, she, I wasn't there, but I guess I was didn't notice. In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Z Zeus did that. Cheech got a squirrel too once. I mean, it's just, you know, their instinct. He saw the lizard just now, but he's pre he prefers the lap, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he prefers <laughs> being on the camera. Dog. Yeah, he thinks well, he's a lap dog, which is funny. Well, let's work backwards a little bit, starting with Zeus to Cheech to now with Rusty. Um, the notes I have on Zeus, um, one of your posts described him as on drugs. Was he heavily medicated being that old? Well, he, as Richie said, Linus the honor, he had a, a heart condition. So I think he got worse. And I think having a young Doberman in the house was hard for him. So they put him on, what was it, Xanax? Well, like doggy pros. Yeah, to calm him down. To chill him out. So yeah. what happened was after years on Prozac, doggy Prozac, whatever you want to call, he was highly, like he was an uh, overdose watch. Like it was, it was, they were giving too much for him, I think. Yeah. And so when we got him, he, he looked like he was on drugs. He would stare at nothing and zero energy. It was very sad. And I thought he was just old. And then we didn't want to keep the drug. So we talked to a, a veterinarian, right? Yeah. And then slowly we win him out of it. And he flourished. He became a completely different dog, although he was already 10 and beat up because he was beat up or so. Yeah. He remember he was playing with a, a pit bull. We took him to a dog park and there was a young pit bull and they were trying to run and he kept falling down. But he became such a different dog. It was beautiful to see the last year of his life, he was not high on any sort of drugs and he yeah. was 
being a dog and having fun and hunting. So yeah, that's what happened with him. Yeah, I love to hear a story like that. And I, I have to compliment you guys as dog owners because as, as I'll try to unfold, you guys do a lot of things right. And you do a lot of things where you kind of go a little bit beyond what the average person does to make sure a dog has a good chance and a great home and you know flourishes. So that Thanks. said, how did what was the transition from Zeus or what, what did Zeus pass away from? You said uh, another post said suddenly. He kind of honey. He did. <laughs> what did you say? Well, he basically we think he had either a heart attack, heart attack or a stroke or something. It was very sunny. He was hunting, he was running after squirrels, and I found him, you know, dead in oh, the yard. The driveway. Yeah. He so. must have pro probably ran after something and just kind of, you know, yeah. gave up. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, after having experience with Cheech having a heart condition, knowing that Zeus passed away so quickly, it was, I felt actually it was great. At the time it was horrific because you're not expecting the dog is okay and now he's dead. Yeah. But now, you know, experiencing all the suffering that it can also have, I was actually happy with the fact that he went fast because they don't deserve to suffer a single thing. All right, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> nice butt. Nice butt, uh, Rusty. <laughs> Come on. Um, so moving from Zeus to Cheech, how much time was between those two? A year and a half. No, that was with Rusty. With Cheech was pretty quick. With, with Zeus to Cheech was quick. Yeah. Yeah, Zeus. Okay. Like maybe a few months. I, I was out of town. I, I I was on tour. I was in Brazil. He was in Brazil. When 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 uh when Zeus died. Yeah. And then when I came home, I had a break in the tour, and that's when we got Cheech. Well, Cheech was a very different dog because Zeus was friendly with everybody, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, other dogs, everything. It was really socialized. Where Cheech did not like other dogs. In the <laughs> beginning, if he was laying down, you couldn't get near him because yeah. you'd be defensive. She right. she broke him of all those behaviors. It was pretty impressive. He by the end, he was a real loving dog, loved kids and everything. Yeah. How did you go about and correct me if I'm wrong with what I've gathered, but you adopted him also as an older dog. I think he was like seven years old when you we oh, got him. He was around five, so okay. he stayed with us for five years, and then yeah. that was it. Like he died about 10, 11 years old. And then he didn't have the best reputation. And no. I do some shelter work, so I understand that you know we're supposed to take notes on the dogs to right. help inform you know the public or the potential adopter. You mentioned he had negative notes. You know he had quite the reputation, and he was returned three different times to the kennel. You guys were his fourth chance. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So and how he, did he was how did you go twice with okay. the same family? Okay, buddy, time to go. <laughs> um, so how did you go about selecting him or finding him or well, making him you, your project? I'll tell you how. I I went <laughs> when I was on the road. I'd go on the website out in Fillmore, which is about an hour's drive from where we live. Yeah. There's a, a no kill shelter, Dobie Rescue, and they've got little balls, yeah. You know, they got a website with all their dogs. So there were three that I picked out that I, I liked the way they look. You know, a little superficial, I know, but I, I liked the look of the dog. Well, that's the first dog. And, and yeah. the rap sheet was was good, and 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 so then I knew about the one that we ended up with. His his name back then was Mr. Spock. Now we named him Chief. <laughs> yeah. But um, I knew about him. He's going to go off here in a minute. He hurts him. Okay. I, I knew about him, but I figured, well, that dog has some problems, so we're not going to look at him. And, and I, each dog I went to look at, one was more aggressive than the next. Like <laughs> I went up to the pen, one jumped up and was snarling, went to another pen. He was foaming, hair stand. I said, what the hell? So the one we got, which was Cheech, was all the way in the back, just sitting watching. So I said, well, I said, why don't we see him anyway? You know, I, I knew about him. So she brought him out and- uh, He's doing his job. I really liked him. I got teary eyed because he reminded me of Zeus because he yeah. was similar build. And uh, we ended up taking him home. Yeah. But you know, I got to say something very funny. I, she was away and I took him locally to a place where they were going to do like a training. Everybody had their dogs there. Now I knew that 
Cheech didn't like other dogs, but I didn't know to what degree. So I get him out of the car. I've got a, a collar, a, a, one of the choker collars, but the kind that are pressurized so that if you pull it, it, it mm -hmm. it's one they told me to get. So I had that one. I had a muzzle on him. And just in case things got too out of hand, I had a shock collar because I, I didn't you know, know what was going to happen. So he comes off looking like, you know, Hannibal Lecter, you know, Silence of the Lambs. But he looking. loves people, right? And he comes out and he sees the dog and he goes crazy. And I, I, I could barely control it. I'm holding him. He went after one dog that was actually facing the wrong direction, laying down. It was a big <laughs> dog with a lot of hair. Went after that one. So the trainer comes over and says, bring him to the middle. We have him in the middle. Now all the dogs are walking in the circle and he was getting crazy. So finally the trainer says, you're going to have to leave. He's not ready for this. Okay. They told me that. What happened was um, we decided to get him because when we met him, he was okay. He was fine. He was adorable. He was asking to be pet, all that cute stuff. So like, well, how bad can he be? And she told us about uh, don't get close when he's sleeping you know, stuff like that. He might not like kids, whatever. And we're like, okay, don't like dogs. We got him home and he had a little few things that we wanted to work on. And then slowly, like he said, I, I broke a few habits. Like he became also a lap dog and he loved all the friends. He didn't like dogs at all. But um, so when we took him, he was with us for maybe a few weeks. So he also didn't know us. We didn't know him. So it was kind of a, something that we learned was kind of a mistake to bring him so early to the training like that right. because he was already five. He had all this trauma. He's like, you know, we have to give him time and space. So we learn with that as well too, but he turned out to be an amazing dog. Just didn't like other dogs, which is yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's common. And yeah. yeah, he did like another dog. They, uh, a, a, he liked a tiny dog that yeah, uh, is like... <laughs> a, a, some friends of ours that used to dog sit and they brought over their little dog. He's like three pound dog. And he's he cohabitated, what's the word? Yeah. Lived with the other dog for a few days. Okay, yeah. I saw a couple of uh, videos and posts with that. And there's also Miles. Didn't he have some... Miles the yeah. Bulldog, didn't they? That was they... Zeus. No, no, Zeus. no, Miles. Miles was the oh, was Zeus. Yeah. Tachi's bulldog. Was Zeus and Miles played. And that was Zeus. Yes. Yeah, Not exactly. Cheech. Yes, there was Zeus. Yeah, Cheech okay. and Miles. Was, yeah, okay. when we got Cheech, Miles had already passed away as well. Okay. The little fly in the sky, doggy sky. <laughs> and so was this more a case of acclimation? Like, I know there's like this, this rule of three days, three weeks, three months, and that's three days to decompress from the kennel and three weeks to you know, understand the layout of their new home and then three months to finally settle in. But did you do anything special or did you just kind of, you know, give the dog a chance to acclimate? We certainly learned that we had to acclimate him. So we did that. We tried one trainer and she helped us a little bit, but was very briefly. And then I learned that I had a good connection with him and I learned that he, I could read him very well. And Dobermans are super expressive. And if you know how to read the dog, you, you know what's coming next. So I learned, like, he would be laying in his bed and he didn't, didn't want us to get close because he didn't know us. But I slowly will just pass through the bed and pat his head, good boy, and leave. Like, give him space, but also let him know that it's okay to touch and nothing's going to work. I'm not, I'm, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to take you away or whatever. So slowly that happened. And I don't know, it was more like an instinctive way to break all those bad habits. And he learned us and we learned him and slowly he became a really incredible dog. I yeah. mean, can't say nothing bad about him at all, right? Yeah. Cheech? Yeah, no. zero. Well, was... there's a big difference between the two dogs. Cheech was a dog where if you opened the gate to let him, because we have an area here by the pool that's gated. And then on the other side is the rest of the property. And, and so Cheech was the kind of dog that if you open that gate, yeah. he'd take off running. Yeah. And, and you could call his name. Wouldn't listen. And he just would come back when he was ready to come back. Yeah. Whereas this dog, Rusty. you open the gate and he'll run to the edge of the gate and get in full alert mode and then look at us and, and wait for like a command. Yeah. And even if we tell him to go, he don't he won't go unless we go out with him. Yeah, it's very interesting. And if he is out and I call him, he comes right back. 
And yeah. that, that is how he's been since we got him. Yeah, he's very good. So no, no training, no, none of the no, basics. Strange. He's just like that. He He's like literally our shadow. Cheech was very connected to us, but he was more independent as well. He would go out, he would come to the living room in the night and sleep. Uh, Rusty, he might be dead asleep in the living room. If we're both going to the bedroom, he wakes up and drags himself, but he, he just don't. <laughs> and he's a great, great guard dog, which uh, Cheech wasn't. Cheech was not a guard. Well, he wasn't at a all. dog at all. He let any cheeks would let anybody in the house. <laughs> this one, you got to go through a whole process, process, yeah, to let to have company come over. Yeah, you know, some people he's not as friendly with. Now, when Cheech passed, were you guys kind of in agreement that you know you'd continue the course with another Doberman, or was there any discussion to mix it up? Or, you know, Julie, I know you grew up with a bunch of different uh, breed dogs. Yeah, Rich also had, like, you had the German yeah, Shepherds. Yeah, we had a Cooley, a Hungarian Sheepdog, a ger two German Shepherds, and a, an, an I Irish said. Setter. Uh, but, you know, we took about a year and a half with no dog. Yeah, it was very hard. Because there was a lot of traveling and touring involved, and, and it was really difficult. The last days of Cheech oh. were really, really intense. Yeah. You know, he was really sick, and it was just really bad. But um, once, and I, so I had a big year of touring last year, you know, and so we decided that Me once, too. Yeah, We're both gone. Too. Um, and we decided that once all the uh, the shows were, were played out, that we would look and it just so happened, you know, we looked back on the website, you know, where, where we got yeah. sheets and we saw a couple dogs again that were interesting. We went to Japan because I had a few shows there and I in my mind was set on one dog in particular. And then when we got there, she said, well, we got this other dog, mm -hmm. we're calling him Pluto. And it was this one. It was rusty. And he came in right away, you know, jumping around, licking our faces. Sat in between us like Sat he right between us. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this might be the dog, you know, because the other one was a beautiful dog, but it was a, a bit aloof. Right. Well, that means anything, you know, because, you know, the, they don't, he doesn't know us, but somehow this one, when he came in was so into being around us and, yeah. and, you know, I suppose it could have been anybody coming in there. He would have acted that way, but I think that was, but that know. kind of sold, you know, we liked the personality it was very different. Yeah. It was like a happier, younger personality and I kisses. He liked, he liked kissing us and, uh, Cheech would never ever give us a kiss, which is, I thought it was interesting. He never yeah. tried to kiss, like lick us or anything. Yeah. And Rusty's the opposite. He's like, he will lick us. He would like, he's just so different. And we kind of fell in love with his personality. But we were looking at it, all sorts of dogs. I remember I, I wasn't ready for a long time. And I was looking here and there, other places. And, you know, there's so many breeds, like, there's so many huskies around us here. like they're a hard breed to have. And, and I feel like it's so, I wouldn't, I would not like, and I don't think it's fair to have a Husky in LA, in California, it's so hot. I don't know, I, just, I, I am like that person. I'm like, it's kind of not cool, but they have a lot around the area. So I was looking at it and was, but then again, we, we followed the Dobie Rescue that we, we rescue all the dogs and we're like, oh, let's visit the Dobie Rescue and see what happens. We got a lot of sun here where we are specifically oh, so yeah. a, lo a long haired dog sitting outside and yeah, all, I could see that you know, trying to say it. it didn't seem like whatever dog we would get here where we live it probably would have been something with short hair. Although obviously our dog doesn't sleep outside, doesn't live outside. He stays in, yeah. but I, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. Certain dogs should, should be in, in a snowy environment and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, I wrap up every show with what I call the zoomies, and the zoomies are five fast, mostly frivolous questions. The first Ooh. one being the most frivolous, but number one is, do you kiss your dogs on the mouth? Sometimes. <laughs> you do? That's the right answer. He kisses us, though. He'll get a lick in here, and then I, 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 I do uh, kiss, in the nose. kiss his snout. He's, he calls him snout. Yeah, snout. <laughs> okay, good. good, good to hear. Question oh, two. Mouth. <laughs> What's that? My tongue stays in the mouth. I can't yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. There's only been a few guests that have copped to, you know, having their tongue reach the dog. 
Yikes. Um, but I'm a I'm a proponent of kissing the dog, but not with the oh, tongue. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Question two is: Do any of your dogs? Did they ever have a theme song? Did they have a song that you guys kind of assigned to them, or reminded you of them, or you can imagine if they were a baseball player, what would their walk up to the plate music be? That kind of you know nails yeah. down who they oh. are. We don't have one, but you know, last week I woke up in a crazy mood and I was singing a song and I had all kinds of crazy lyrics for him, for yeah. Rusty. And I mean, I had something in there about him filing tax returns. I mean, it was a crazy <laughs> song and it was a great song and I forgot it and I didn't get my recorder to remember it. And then yeah. a few days later, I kind of remembered it. And yeah. so I have to go back. So I might be able to write and record a song for, for Rusty. Rusty. So he has a theme song. I had a song that I wrote is only a verse in a chorus. I wrote for a dog that passed away when it was my dog in Brazil. And when I moved to America, he stayed. And when he died, I was not expecting. It was horrible for me. So I did that too. And then when Chish passed away, I made this little reel with a lot of videos of him being adorable. And I put Claire de Lune. And it's like, Deb it's Claire de Lune, Debussy. And that song, every time it plays, I can't, I start crying. It's just horrible. But <laughs> that reminds me of Cheech. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, question three, as musicians, you get the opportunities to be endorsed by, you know, your bass strings, your guitar strings, your guitars, your amps. If the dog was to be endorsed by anybody, who would they be endorsed by? Well, I don't know. But actually, the other day, this brand reached out to me and they told me they would be sending a bunch of stuff if I you know, just take photos with Rusty and their products. And it was bandanas and stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like Rusty is like a teenager. Anybody a food endorsement would be great. Food... <laughs> does he does he, uh, does he have does he have expensive taste? Is he eating a lot of, the uh, term yeah. is is he eating bougie food? Well, you know what he eats that he gives a big headache? Leather. We have to open <laughs> oh, him up. Food. We have to open him up. Having him for three weeks, we had to make had a major surgery on oh. him on Christmas because he had eaten a piece of leather belt before we adopted him. And it yeah. was about to kill him and we didn't oh know. Oh my gosh. So oh, yeah. and he ate more leather. He's a very expensive dog. Yeah, <laughs> he's been very expensive. Out of the gate, he was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I try to rationalize the finances of it because I realized. You know, I would have been at, in at least for for thirty five hundred if I would have bought a puppy. I don't Doberman. even know. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're we're over double now on oh, him because yeah. the surgery was just they had to. He would have died. You know, mm -hmm. they had to open. He's got yep. scars all the way down, and and there was no guarantees that he was going to make it. It was fifty fifty. Yeah. And it, Christmas. It was really rough. Oh, it but was horrible. He came out of it. He, thank God. Yeah. yeah. He came what, out was that it. just this past Christmas? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh I mean, my gosh! For about two weeks, and all of a sudden, it yeah. was like he, he got started sick. throwing up. He wasn't holding his food down. He's getting skinny, and or something's wrong. So we took him in. They X-rayed him. They said there's something blocking. Give it a day or two. If that doesn't move, you're going to have to do a surgery. Yeah, it didn't move, and then we did the surgery. It was very horrible. Yeah, I've had two friends with the dog eating the toy and taking the plastic squeaker. And eating yeah. that thing and then the exact same exact same surgery they had the surgery and it was like well it's you know it's up in the air whether they'll make it or not I, happy to report both of them have made it and oh, continue good. to torture their parents <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> okay question four is do you have a dog voice do you both uh, speak <laughs> oh god yeah well, <laughs> you can do it i can't do it i have to see the dog to do he's the right voice. there <laughs> No, Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> I do have a voice, but I don't have it now. Oh, I have to be stop in character it. to do the voice. Now, I, is it the voice? There's two voices. There's a voice. There's that voice you speak to him. Maybe you get over cutesy, but do you also have a voice as you imagine he would sound? Oh. Personified? It's a two. It's a two-way question. No, I don't have a. Vo I did not uh, vocalize Rusty. I don't yes. have a voice for. But for you him. have a voice, a distinct voice that you use to speak to him. Yeah, and he's like rules to the dog, whatever he said. <laughs> and I speak in Portuguese, Portuguese with him in English. She, she, I, she, I, I'm like, oh, I feel you. Oh, I feel you. Get me with you. Oh, gente. 
Are the, are, are the dogs bilingual? Do they know basic commands yeah, in both English? Yeah, he's bilingual. Yeah, he understands. You know, he reads the body. He gets the inflections. That's what it is. And and you know, I will. I would hear his. I don't hear his voice, like you asked, but I see almost like a person in him. If he was a person, I could kind oh, of yeah. see. And he's like a very yeah. fresh, naive, beautiful, like almost like a teenager person. I I don't know. Young soul. Young dog. soul, but uh, he's he's so sweet. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, question five, I simply ask you guys if there's a dog organization or a service that you want to shout out. Uh, you mentioned a couple earlier that you got your dogs. I don't know if you want to shout them out or your sitter or your groomer, but who who uh, who gets some some spotlight? Well, for me, everybody that worries about animals in general, shout out to all of you guys, because it's, uh, you know, they're naive and they only have us and we we, we can do a lot for them. But for sure, we adopted those three dogs at the Dobie Rescue in, in Fillmore, which is Dobie Little Paws. Is that what the name? Yep. Yeah. That's what I have written down. Dobies and, and Little Paws Dobie Rescue. Little Paws. Yeah, because I have them here on Instagram and they're great. They, yeah, Dobie Red. Dobie Sand Little Paw Rescue. Yeah, we're that. all blind. Dobie Sand Little Paw Rescue. Dobie what? Sand. Sand. Yeah, that's what Dobie's I mean. Ant. Dobie oh Ant. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Brazilian in me. Dobie's and Dobie's and <laughs> Little Paws Rescue. No wonder rescue. why it never made sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Dobie's <laughs> and Little Paws Rescue. I'm so sorry, but that's you know Brazilian. Uh, they do an amazing job. They're not a non-killer shelter, and even if you adopt from them, they even tell you, "Listen, if something goes wrong and you cannot deal with the dog or whatever, bring them back. Yes. Don't let it run loose. Don't, you know." But they are a no-kill shelter. They are right. They don't. Yeah. They don't put yeah. the dog. Yeah. So yeah. they and they're incredible, and they have so many dogs. And you know, Doberman is. It's a breed that it needs a lot of attention. It needs a lot of, um, you need to know what you're doing too, because they- We got a lot they, of energy. They're smart dogs as always, a lot of them, but they also, they also can become dangerous. So they are in that list of the dangerous dogs, only because if you don't know what you're doing, all that yeah. animal can turn sideways as we know. But, you know, listen, I think a lot of people get them thinking there's something, don't know that it requires work, and they send them back. So they have so many dogs and they're amazing. They're all beautiful. And I just, I don't know. I feel like it's the best work you ever, whoever is there out there helping dogs. It's such a hard work, heartbreaking. And um, they're doing a beautiful job. Yeah. To your point, you had a quote that says, patience and love cures everything. Yeah. And that was, uh, you said he showed us that every day. That was Cheech. But to your point about the um, the shelters or the dogs coming out of the shelters, the Dobermans, because at our shelter, it's so much uh, primarily pits and pit mixes. And it's the same thing. People don't understand, but it's like, you know, educate yourself, give them the patience, give them the space and give them the love they deserve. And you got a, a great dog. Yeah. And the, and the time, you have to spend time. You can't just have the dog waiting for you all day long. Then you put them out. Every time, like our dog, Rusty, if we put him out, oh, go run, go burn your energy because we're lazy. That doesn't exist. He stays <laughs> next to us looking. Are you going or not? So he needs you. Like the dog needs you. A few of them are more independent, but like we have a Doberman and he doesn't just go out there and burn his energy. We have to go with him, even if yeah. you're tired. And it's fine, and it's part of it. But it, he's a great dog, and all dogs need time too. You know, you can just have yeah. the dog and whatever. Yeah. Well, Richie, Julia, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show and tell me all about your dogs. When I uh, when I first approached you, I saw that you had dogs on social media, but I didn't know the extent of it. So I was pleasantly surprised to dive in and go years deep and learn about Cheech and learn about Zeus. And it's uh, it was a real pleasure. So thank you. Oh, thank thank you. you. We had a blast talking about the yeah. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> there are little babies, part of our lives, big part of it. So it was a blast. <laughs>